part of the Undertaker character. You didn't think Undertaker without Paul Bearer. He was, a, he was a tremendous friend and another guy who loved to play practical jokes on me. I couldn't leave, I couldn't leave a drink unattended without coming back and checking it for cucumbers. I mean, who does that? Who puts cucumbers in a man's drink? An evil man, that's who. Big Kane. Our story stretches over two decades as the Brothers of Destruction. The greatest wrestling story ever told. You are, without a doubt, the most genuine human being I know, Glenn. I, well, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. He insists that I call him Mr. Mayor now. <laughs> Don't get high, brother. I mean, I didn't get mad when you stole all my moves. Oh, although you did do them better than me. <laughs> uh, you, you have a gift for making everyone around you better, including me. Speaking, speaking of being better, that brings me to my second signature mental move. This one I learned over a piece of cornbread. I'm 25 years old. I just won my first world heavyweight title. I'm sitting in my parents' kitchen eating a big old plate of red beans and rice my mom had made. Red beans and rice, come on. When my dad, my dad leans over the counter he starts to lower his glasses on the tip of his nose, and that's a surefire sign there's a lecture coming. And it did. He goes, boy, you paying your taxes? <laughs> yeah, Dad, I I'm paying my taxes. All right, you living beneath your means, right? Yeah, Dad, I I'm living beneath my means. Uh all right, good. All right, listen closely. I want you to remember this. He goes, the toes that you step on on the way to the top are connected to the same asses you're going to have to kiss on the way back down. Whoa! Dad's spewing the knowledge, right? He instilled in me right then and there. No matter who I come across, treat them with respect. Yeah, I may be world champion, but that doesn't make me any more important than that local security guy I pass when I walk into an arena, or that local crew guy that's working in catering. You never know what one hello, one how you doing, one smile or one handshake is gonna affect somebody. It could literally change their life and it might even save their life. So, I love you too. So, we're not gonna have a love fest. So that's why my second mental move that helped me anchor my true identity is respect and loyalty go a long way.
Now, thinking of respect and loyalty, I've always considered it an extreme honor to step in this ring and perform. It's thanks to guys like Dusty, Harley, Ricky Steamboat, Andre the Giant, Bruno San Martino, Bret Hart, and the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Thank you for paving the way for my generation and for the generations to come. Perry Jackson, you stepped up when Buzz left me high and dry. I wouldn't, be, without you by my side, I wouldn't be where I am today. Bruce Pritchard, you were instrumental in getting me in front of Vince initially. You were such an advocate for me, and without that original meeting, there may not have ever been an undertaker. Dan Pucciarelli, your stellar work on the last ride is legendary, as is your putting up with me during the filming of the documentary. To the woman who quite literally made every car, every flight, every accommodation for me and my family, all the while doing it with amazing grace and humor, Ms. Kathy Morell. Y'all might be the only ones that get this part. Now, I was going to wait to the last second before I mentioned this next person. Just like I always had to wait to the last second before I got my ring gear or my coats. Terry Anderson. Terry Anderson is a woman behind every iconic look of The Undertaker. <laughs> Terry, I hope you hear this. Because this will definitely be the last nice thing that I ever say about you. I've had an outstanding team of doctors, as you can imagine. Dr. Jeff Dugas, Dr. Edwin Sue, and Dr. Thomas Bird. Dr. Bird, you've put me back together more times than I can even count. You've seen more of my insides than what anybody should ever have to. <laughs> my final and most significant mental move comes into play the day before WrestleMania 25. There we are. HBK. The showstopper. Mr. WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels. Versus the Phenom, The Undertaker, and his undefeated streak. We're sitting there discussing our match when I turn to Michael Hayes and I say, Mike, I said, when are we on tomorrow? And after a long, uncomfortable pause, he goes, you guys are on third and you have about 15 minutes. Now I look at Sean, and Sean's looking at me, and we know exactly what each other's thinking. And it ain't good. I mean, I mean, it's WrestleMania for crying out loud. Now, at this point in our career, we got nothing left to prove. But an insult this bad made us go out and do just that. After a little bit of hell was raised, all right, there was a lot of hell raised. We. We ended up getting a few extra minutes and getting moved to later in the show. We weren't on last, but I'm pretty sure everybody that followed us wish we had been. I love the watch. <laughs> oh, man. So, we ended up leaving it all in the ring that night. Sean. I thank you for your friendship and for giving me one of the very best matches of my career. <laughs>